everyone, it's Elham again. And I have promised to answer four of your most frequently questions uh, with another separate video. And here I am. The first question is, can we measure the pH directly? This is such a common and such a frequent question. And I know you are going to hate me, but I'm sorry, that's life. The answer is sometimes yes, sometimes no. And that depends on uh, at least two factors. For very low viscosity probes, such as a foam, such as micellar water, such as a toner, you can measure the pH directly. But still, you need to take a sample. You do not immerse the electrode directly into the bulk of your product because you don't want to uh, cause any cross-contamination. So you need to take a sample, measure the pH, and then discard that sample. That is, again, when you are working in a small laboratory and with small batches, that means taking lots of sample for pH measurement and if you are working with a 500 gram batch at the end uh, you will sometimes lose about 100 grams of the sample for pH measurement. This is when dilution still makes sense although technically you can do that. Another factor is the type and the shape of your electrode. Here I have two pH glass electrodes. This one is a conventional electrode and the shape is like we know it from, I don't know, high school. With this one you cannot measure the pH of uh, products such as a cream directly. This electrode is this electrode is a specialty electrode with a pointed tip, if you can see in the video. This is much more expensive and this is a kind of electrode that they use usually in the food industry for measuring the pH of cheese and bread and the supplier uh, recommends that we can measure the pH of the creams directly. So with this electrode, there is no chance that you can measure the pH of a cream or a high viscosity product such as a shower gel directly. With this electrode, technically you can. Still, you need to take a sample because you don't want to dip the electrode directly into the bulk of your product. And second, you need more uh, time and more chemicals to clean the electrode in between each measurement. If you dip this electrode in a diluted cream, it is easily rinsed then with uh, distilled water and you can dab it uh, dry and immerse it in the next sample. But if you dip it in a concentrated cream, although technically you can do that, when you Remove the electrode, you need a much longer time and you need a specialty electrode cleansing solution to clean the electrode before you can measure the next sample. So at the end, you are uh, spending more time probably than the time that you need just to dilute your uh, sample. So if you can afford such, a, such an electrode, it is technically possible, but still we recommend that you dil dilute your samples. Whatever you do, you must do it always the same procedure. If you decide to measure the pH of your toners or your foams directly, then you need to do it always the same procedure. You cannot do it sometimes, or today I have time and I'm in the mood of dilution, so I make a 10% dilution, and tomorrow I am in a hurry and I, direct, uh, I, me I measure directly. GMP, GLP, you must do the same procedure 
every day. And if there are 10 people in your laboratory doing the same thing, they must do the same procedure, all of them, the same and get the same results. So this is something that you have to keep in mind. The next question is which acids shall be used to decrease the pH of our uh, products? Basically, we can use uh, lactic acid and citric acid. Both of them had, have advantages and disadvantages. Uh, these are most common in cosmetic formulations. Uh, they are both available as synthetic or as fermentation products. Uh, usually they are, for, for cosmetic formulations, they are available natural as fermentation products. Citric acid usually comes as a powder, 100%, and lactic acid is available as an 80% uh, dilution. So it is easier to work with. Uh, lactic acid is much more expensive compared to the citric acid, but lactic acid is a, has the advantage of being a moisturizer, Citric acid has the advantage of being a chelator. So both of them are used to decrease the pH. Both of them have their own advantages. Citric acid sometimes can affect the scent of the product. So you need to run your stability test to see if citric acid has any impact on, on the scent of your product on the long term. But basically both of them could be used. It depends on your budgets and on how you can easily uh, have access to any of them. Both of them technically could be used and are used in the industry. What we recommend for ease of procedure and for faster procedure is to prepare some stock solutions with different concentrations of any of them. Uh, we have 80% uh, lactic acid, 40%, 20%, 10%, and 5%, for example. And depending on the situation, we use any of these concentrations. You want to avoid adding a lot of acid to your sample so that you don't fall from the other side of the spectrum. And this is why having different concentrations available and at hand will make your life much easier. Another question is about increasing the pH. Sometimes you have to increase the pH of the product. And for that case, you can use basically arginine, which is a natural amino acid, or sodium hydroxide. Again, both of them have their features and their advantages and disadvantages. Arginine is much more expensive compared to the sodium hydroxide, but is more easily available than pure sodium hydroxide in pellet form. I, unfortunately, I don't have any dry sodium hydroxide in the lab at the moment, so I'm showing you a diluted sample. Sodium hydroxide is extremely aggressive and extremely caustic, and it is difficult to have access to 100% dry sodium hydroxide. Usually the suppliers do not deliver it easily because first the logistic is more difficult, and second, uh, sometimes they ask you to provide them with uh, certification with the, uh, that you have a degree in chemistry or biology, that you have uh, already uh, a business. So these are uh, some uh, difficulties with getting uh, access to the sodium hydroxide. Uh, sodium hydroxide is much more potent, so you need less than sodium hydroxide compared to the arginine, but it is, as again, much more aggressive and the chances that you drop from the other side of the roof is higher than when you are working with the arginine. Both of them technically are suitable and are used, uh, but Again, it depends on your budget, on how easily you get access to any of them, and on your formulation concept, which one you use.